Hey everyone, today I'm going to be designing a laser cut lantern and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to bring you along and show you how I go from an idea to a finished object. So we'll start with an idea, develop it, and then go through and make it. I'll start with an internet search for references and save them all together in a folder or on Pinterest. You'll see in this case I was really leaning towards a Japanese inspired form which led me to thinking about bonsai trees and then I was considering border pattern detailing. As I'm doing this I'll be doodling in my sketchbook just trying to explore different elements. Once I've got the basic idea of what's going on I'll jump into CAD and start roughing it out in 3D. The CAD software I'm using is called Rhino and it's pretty much an industry standard for my day job but whatever CAD program you're comfortable with is totally fine. This, this isn't going to be a software tutorial. Now that I've settled on a form that I'm happy with, I can start adding in the details and refining it to work with laser cutting. I'm going with 3mm bamboo plywood and 3mm frosted acrylic as my main materials and I decide that mostly on what thickness I think will proportionally look good and what's going to give the piece enough structural integrity. So now I'm going to go through and change all my surfaces to the correct material thickness. As I'm doing this I'm getting a feel for how I need to layer up the parts and how they might all fit together. With the material dimensions locked in now, I can go through and add the tabs and slots so that this thing fits together like a big old 3D jigsaw puzzle. Tricky spots are where parts don't meet at right angles to each other, so where these pieces need to come in at 45 degrees, I'm going to make the slot longer on the front side so that it has the clearance to be assembled. And once the part's in place, this won't be seen at all. Another tip is to make your tabs and slots slightly different sizes for different parts. This will help if you've got a bunch of similar parts that need to go into specific places because then only the actual part will fit. This just adds a layer of dummy proofing for when it gets to assembly. I want an opening door on one side so I'm going to do laser cut hinges similar to those I did on the treasure chest. The tricky thing in this instance however is because I gave the frame angled sides the hinges are also going to need to follow that angle. Which is one of those things where of course it would have been much simpler just to make a right angled box but then you're compromising your design intent. And sometimes it's worth fighting those battles, sometimes it's not. I think maybe part of being a good designer is knowing when to draw those lines. Let me just mention offsets real quick. The laser beam removes around 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters when it cuts. So what I do as a general rule of thumb is make my material thickness 0.1 millimeters thinner in the CAD model than what it actually is in real life. And nine times out of 10, this will give me a decent fit. I found the variation in material thickness and any warping will normally play a larger role in how well everything goes together. Now I'm happy with the function, it's time to get to the fun stuff and add the detailing in. Just out of curiosity, how many of you actually use CAD software and what's your program of choice? Personally I mostly use Rhino but I dabble a bit in Fusion 360 and Blender. Also, apologies about the choppy time-lapse footage, I'm still trying to figure out a nice way to edit screen captures. So let me just summarize my CAD process. I block out the basic size and shape and once the form's looking about right, I add the material thickness and main structural details. Doing it this way around means that while I'm conscious of what's possible for laser cutting, I'm not letting constraints dictate the design initially which I feel lets me be more creative with things. After that I'll make the tabs and slots and then finish any non-structural detailing. What I have at this point is basically the digital version of the fully assembled laser cut model. So I can lay all the parts out flat and then pull the vector curves from them to export to the laser cutting cam software. 
I'm not sure how this works in other CAD programs, but in Rhino, I can use a command to create borders around the faces of my pieces, and then I'll select those curves and add them to either my cut or engrave layers to keep them organized. You can see I've now got my cut files in black and my areas to engrave in red. Now I'll export these as an Illustrator file because I find that works well when importing into RDWorks. Here we are in RDWorks and you can see that my cut and engrave have come up as two separate layers, which I can change to my cut and engrave settings. Now I can go through and run the job for all my plywood pieces and then the acrylic. If you're assembling it yourself, then you probably don't need instructions because you've designed it. Uh, but otherwise, you want to create a little instruction set along the lines of those great Lego instruction booklets, where it's like, this piece goes to this piece, and you know, they don't use any words or anything, it's just pictures, yeah. Anyway, I've gone ahead and done that in Rhino, um, which, I mean, that could be a whole tutorial for another time, but alternatively, and arguably easier than doing that, just take step-by-step -step photos as you're making it the first time. If you'd like to download the cut files and instruction booklet and give this a try yourself, they'll be available for free on my website. Hey, well there we go, that's basically my workflow on designing stuff for laser cutting. I know everybody has completely different creative processes, so I hope somebody out there found that interesting. That's it from me today, I'll see you on the next one.